Hey everybody, thanks for sticking around. Uh, this is the new release rundown. Normally, we would be joined by a representative from local store. They would mm -hmm. have brought some stuff out, but you may have heard yes. today is Black Friday. Did you know that? What? Yeah. The blackest of Fridays. Uh, yeah, it's the- They darken the yep. skies the with corporatism. There is, there is no happiness and joy <laughs> no. in any retail store as <laughs> exactly. all the employees <laughs> are crushed under the weight of our capitalistic and yes. conspicuous consumption. So, uh, I had asked uh, all the stores, and some of them were like, mm -hmm. yeah, we'll send somebody out. And I was like, it's Black Friday. They're like, no, we won't be sending anybody out. We can't. Uh, so Will uh, is going to be our stand-in this week. Hello, uh, I'm Will. I have uh, visited a store. I've gathered some things. Mm -hmm. I have bought some uh, myself already. Oh, it's so beautiful. Uh, and we are going to kind of go through these. Mm -hmm. But first, I wanted to kind of extend a thank you to all the stores who have been helping us Absolutely. over the past several months with a new release rundown. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to kind of review some of the uh, the deals that they have. So, mm -hmm. uh, Will, Blue Highway Games. Great game um, store. Mm -hmm. Top of Queen and Hill. Mm -hmm. I live uh, a few blocks away. So what are they, what's their, their Black Friday stuff? Uh, Blue Highway this weekend, a Friday, 20% uh, of all jigsaw puzzles. Uh, so a great opportunity to grab some fun puzzles for grandma or anything like that. People mm -hmm. who love puzzles, if you're one of them, I mean, good on you, but... Puzzles are terrible. So. Wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, this uh, is new release right now, yeah. not table takes, sir. That's true. We uh, love all games here. Uh, Saturday, 20% uh, off any one item in the store as well, too. Um, doesn't look like there'd be any restrictions on it necessarily, so it just seems to be 20% off one item. Uh, so definitely head into uh, Blue Highway. There are wonderful little games yep. from the top of Phoenix Hill. They've got a great location, mm -hmm. uh, really homey, really nice. Uh, we have a, you know, there's a promo link that'll be in chat um, yep. that yep. might have more details. Most so Mox Boarding yep. House, who's been on here a whole bunch of times. A whole bunch of times. Uh, they are opening at 9 a.m. all weekend. I, I know because I was there this morning. Mm -hmm. Uh, the giving you a five dollar credit for every fifty dollars that you spend, mm -hmm. and then they have additional gifts uh, over the weekend. If you spend a hundred dollars, you get an enamel pin. Mm -hmm. One hundred and fifty, you get a, a drawstring bag, which is like um, kind of the bag you get from when you buy something from the Apple Store. Yeah. It's like a backpack yep. kind of thing. Yeah. Um, Two hundred dollars. There's a beanie, and it, a nice at two hundred and fifty, you get a mug full of dice. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's one of those things where everyone's like, can't have enough dice, no, right? Never. And it's it's all polyhed like nice polyhedrals, like mm -hmm. random. It's not just a bunch of d sixes either. It's really nice. Yeah. Uh, well, maybe you're playing Warhammer and you want d sixes. Have you ever thought about that? It's all I play is well, Warhammer. So <laughs> Zulu. All I wore is hammer. Uh, <laughs> is also opening at nine. Uh, they have uh, twenty to seventy percent off of three hundred plus games over the course of the weekend. Um, yeah. And they're doing a similar uh, like gift card credit thing. Mm -hmm. You get a dollar for every ten dollars that you spend. Yeah. Um, they also have a bunch of doorbuster deals, but probably more than we can really run through. Yeah, we have a big list here, mm -hmm. but, but there's definitely some cool stuff. Yeah, for I mean, sure. looking looking at these, uh, what I would say is that there's probably. 20 to 25 percent off yeah. um, a bunch of very new releases especially yeah mm -hmm. like so like funko's on there tiny towns uh, is fantastic mm -hmm. yep uh, yeah. black angel i know uh, yeah. is on there stuff like that so everdale if you guys like something mm -hmm. thick yeah yep. definitely so yeah. go check out uh uh zulus yeah. to find out what they're doing Ooh, they got wingspan on sale as well too so if you're into the hotness mm -hmm. definitely you'll get that wingspan speaking of the hotness the hotness do you want to start with wingspan we brought some hotness yeah we can it's new it's got new birds burbs we did it. Burb is the word. Burb is the word. So, fun fact, I grew up in Olympia, and my family was part of the Audubon Society. Mm -hmm. So I spent pretty much every weekend just going into Squally and just birding, which is an activity where you walk around and look at birds. So does that make Wingspan a calming, nostalgic experience for you, or oh. a deeply traumatizing one? I would say probably calming. I didn't even think about this. I probably have some kind of, like, Deeper seated like <laughs> like like connection to this. Uh, no, it's a uh, it's just a great game in general. It's great. It's fun. It's mechanically like it's it's totally fantastic. It's mm -hmm. a great another great Stonemeier game. They're kind of mm -hmm. killing it this uh, year. Elizabeth Hargrave yep. uh, was the designer. Yep. Uh, she's been getting a lot of press lately. Like, I think press another recently. game we have is from her yes. as well. Yes, yeah, as well too. Um, really excited so for that as well. Wingspan, uh, hugely well received. Hugely well received. Um, very very popular. Super um, cool game. It's apparently been doing a really good job of bringing people into the hobby. Yeah. Because it's a very different kind of theme. It's not. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's not war. No. And it's not uh, economic domination. Or city building yep. or, yeah, mm -hmm. worker, worker mm -hmm. placement type of, you know, weird economy stuff. So, but yeah. I haven't played it yet. Do you know, like, what do you do? It's mostly a lot of site collection. You're collecting okay. kinds of birds. Uh, you're collecting varieties of birds and stuff as well, too. And then they have certain scoring, certain scoring, like, purposes as well, too, during okay. the course of the game. Um, this introduces new scoring as well too. So you have birds that have end of round scoring, which mm -hmm. is a new thing for the game itself. And this expansion is European. The Euro yeah, that's so, right, yeah. yeah. So when you're trying to 
uh, figure out the details of the swallow. Yes. You get to ask whether it's a African I, or. Do they do the African expansion next? So that you can do that joke. So you can get, thro <laughs> so you can get thrown off the bridge. Exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, but just new uh, new tokens, new uh, new ways of scoring in mm -hmm. general, uh, uh, ways of like feeding birds and certain thing aspects of life, so stuff like that as well. Uh, so yeah, it's just uh, more of what you love. If you've played Wingspan already, or if you haven't yet, but you want an, maybe you know uh, an even deeper experience with the game itself. I know. Okay. Personally, or just some variety. Or just some variety as well, mm -hmm. too. Yeah, yeah. Personally, I think Wingspan is a fantastic game. Um, I think it's super, super cool. But I think it also could use a little bit of variety like this. It okay. could use something a little bit deeper as well, too. But all, again, my personal kind of games are Terra Mystica, you know, Dune, stuff like that, essentially, as well, too. So, so this, is, this is an expansion. This is an expansion, um, yep. And Not a standalone. So recommended if you obviously have the basic game. Definitely, but yeah. Wingspan, in general, is recommended for fans of set collection, yes. people who love birds, yeah. people who want just kind of a different theme. Yeah. Do you know any games that you would specifically say are similar? I was gonna say, if you if you liked Machi Koro or like Splendor, it's a little, it's do definitely you, Do you think it's that, that. intro-y? No, it's, it's definitely deeper than that, than okay. those games. But if you like those kinds of games, this is a, a step after that that you can take okay. that's definitely not gonna be, it's not like you're jumping into, you know, Terra Mystic, the new Terra Mystic expansion. It's not the with, like, ex Exactly, yeah, okay. or something like that, especially. Yeah, it's, it's not... You so know, what you're saying is yeah. Wingspan yes. could be the wind beneath your wings as you rise from splendor they lift me up. towards <laughs> Terra Mystica? <laughs> yeah, exactly, okay. exactly. Yeah. All right. the, the mountaintop that is Terra Mystica, my personal favorite portion. Uh, but again, if you have anybody in your ha in your family who really loves Wingspan, this would be a perfect gift for yeah. them, too. Or loves birds, like my grandparents. Are you going to buy them Wingspan now? I probably might. Actually, I might. My grandma might. My grandma would love. What is the spite level? Of Very spite? low, extremely low. I don't like it. It's I. That's the, my biggest thing is that I just can't. Do spite they not people. know what birds do to each other right? in the real world? Mm -hmm. All they do is kill. <laughs> all they do is, <laughs> it's, all it's, they do is extremely it's, it's, annoy exactly. each other. Uh, what um, do you want to do next? Do you want to stick with Hargrave or do you want to hop to something else? I kind of want to hop to Fog of Love just because it's such a cool game okay, and great. it's such a weird concept and I really like it. Have you played it? I have not, but I, I read a bunch about it. Did you really? Yeah. Is it good? Is uh, it as cool and weird as I think it is? Probably. Okay. So I, I why, love why, don't you why don't you start off and I'll tell you if you're wrong. Okay. So from my understanding, this is like a almost like a rom-com, like a, a, almost like, you know, a, a romance movie style board game where it's it seems to have scenes in it as well too, where you play out scenes. And then it also seems to be very much based on like, almost like that weird like, it's a criminal who fell in love with a cop, and they, you know, they're they so different. How can they ever ma be together? Yep. Like, And I'm absolutely in love with this idea. It's, Great. it's insane. Uh, then this is the game for you. OK. I'm uh, okay, so, so like, excited. None of that is wrong. OK. Uh, so a couple things. You, know, th you are basically playing a couple mm -hmm. uh, who is in a relationship. Fantastic. And you're trying to kind of play through to see what right. happens. Hold on. I'm going to. OK, I'm in the mindset. Go yep. ahead. Yep. So. Uh, you are have your traits. Okay. Right? You know, like you know, you're kind of like dealt a hand. Um, you know, you'd be like different kind of thing. Like I played like um, uh, a, a really rich um, like a trust fund guy. Cool. Who Red. was super conservative. That's awesome. And <laughs> my wife was playing a character who was like a super like progressive hippie friend. Rad. Uh, uh, yeah. So, uh, so you you. How could they ever be together? I know, right? <laughs> Uh, and the answer so was, uh, I played my character, and she tried to play our relationship, <laughs> and it went poorly. Um, uh, so you have this character who, who values these things. Cool. So what it is is you, you know, you might want because you have like these five different tracks on. Yeah, there. yeah, let's yeah. You might want those to reach different levels. Okay. To kind of meet your goals for the relationship. Interesting. Um, and so you kind of play through these scenes you'll mm -hmm. you'll have a scene you'll kind of read the narration and mm -hmm. you'll decide what you kind of want to do and your decision so will kind of raise or lower the different tracks of the relationship interesting and you're kind of trying to communicate to the other player yeah. like i want this track to go up okay you know we kind of need to work together on this my question is it cooperative then it can be, right? or eventually you can decide to end the relationship. Like, oh, so, so here's, really? here's the thing: is when you're playing this game with somebody, especially somebody that you're in a relationship. Yeah, with, absolutely. You kind of need to be clear: are we playing our relationship? Yeah, that was, Or are we playing our characters? I was reading this, and that was my immediate fear: was like, am, am I just, am I just playing what I'm like my current relationship right now? Because, because like, <laughs> I played my character, and my wife played our relationship. <laughs> sure. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And she was, she just kept being like. 
why are you being well, such a dick? And I'm like, do you look at the traits I have yeah, laid like, out like, here? Yeah, I'm, I'm a conservative, I'm, like, yeah, trust fund. I'm kind like, of a dick. Yeah, right? Yeah. So. That's amazing. Uh, it's not, so this is not a game, I would say, for people who are strategic. No. This is not a game for people no. who are hyper-competitive, strategic, or want to plan ahead a bunch. No. This is a really good game yeah. for people who kind of like light story, I was light story mechanics. Focused, right? yeah. I wouldn't say story focused. Oh, okay. I'd say, because no. you're not making up a story. Oh, there's not you're, a lot of role playing involved? Yeah. Okay, oh, no, okay. there's, you can role play a little bit, okay. especially in your decisions, okay. but it's That's not like, my, my hey, here's the scene, role play it. Oh, okay. That's um, kind of what not, I was most excited about. It's not a role playing about. Okay. You can do that, <laughs> but it's, that's not the base assumption. Okay. It's not like my cop wife comes home and I'm covered in blood and then she has to like, Put your hands up! Nope, I mean, we play this scene out. Definitely <laughs> not that. All right, sounds good. Again, so. I feel like you might be coming with some baggage. <laughs> there you go. Um, but if you kind of want a light game that you kind of just explore, okay, uh, I think, and you want to go play weird characters, I think this is really neat. That um, sounds cool. It's also just it's such a different board game experience. That just seems like uh, it. this was a Target exclusive for like a year or oh, two. Oh wow! Um, so this is the first time it's been in like trade now. Like, okay, cool. Right, and there's, cool. A, there's a there's a cover that is a man and a woman. There's uh, two men, which is mm -hmm. what we have here. There's a cover that has two women. Uh, so it's a really interesting. Oh. Package it looks so and cool. game I'm that is so different from everything else out there. But it's specifically two player. Uh, yes, it is all. I believe so. a two player game, right? I yeah, so. I don't. Yeah. I don't think this gets into like poly. poly really. Yeah, it's just it's <laughs> yeah, two, that's two players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is also like sixty to one hundred and twenty minutes. Wow. So yeah. this is not. So it's, it's an investment. It's weird. Like it's not a light game in the amount of time and complication. Yeah. But each component is actually pretty straightforward and simple. Interesting. Now, do you play this on a first date? No. <laughs> right? No, no, probably not. No, no. D don't do that. That bad. That bad. That would be real also, weird. Also, uh, just like, so, you know when you sit down with your friends? Yeah. And they're like, let's play Vampire, oh, but we're going to play ourselves. <laughs> sure. Don't do that in this one. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I've had enough fights with my, my girlfriend this week. I don't need, like, another one <laughs> yeah. done based on uh, Fog of Love. Dominic is like, oh, it's a, it's a good engagement <laughs> gift. I feel like it's a good engagement <laughs> gift when you're like, this is a bad. Uh, that makes I want to head this one off at the pass. <laughs> yeah, totally. But, yeah, Fog of Love. Definitely mm -hmm. go to your it's, LGS. Yeah, like, it, yeah. It's, it's definitely a game that I think everybody who really likes board games cool. and likes them for more than just their strategic value should play it. I don't think everybody's going to like mm -hmm. it. Um, but it's such a different, neat product and package yeah. that I think everyone should try it. It looks very, very cool. I, I am super excited to try it. Mm -hmm. I think it looks fantastic. That's awesome. Well, very cool. Well, uh, let's go back to the side of the table. What do we want next? Uh, you tell me. You're in charge. Let's go Ishtar. Ishtar. Let's save the best for last. The Ishtar Collective? The Ishtar Collective. My favorite. I've been reading a lot of Ishtar Collective recently. Has nothing to do with this. No, I, so I Ishtar. Um, Ishtar. So plants. The gardens of Babylon. Yeah, have pretty heavy Euro game if you are into that sort of thing. Is it? Um, I mean, well, Is it? you're just so strong. No. You're such a strong no. boy. No. <laughs> Look at guys. No. Oh, look at those arms, man. Like a tree trunk. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, just because you're a hunter. That's true. Exactly. I just made a paper. Exactly. <laughs> so, heavy Euro game. Heavy Euro game. About raising a garden in the desert? Raising gardens in the desert. Uh, there is... It, it, it is, looks very pretty. It is extremely pretty. It's got a lot of components to it as well, too, is my understanding. Um, it is a mix of a lot of different just general good Euro mechanics. So mm -hmm. If you like your... It's uh, Bruno Catan. Mm -hmm. If you like your work placement, resource management, you know, set scoring, kind of those kinds of so games. Euro game stuff. Yeah, Euro game stuff. If you like that type of stuff, this is definitely for you. Um, theme wise, you are uh, gardeners trying to uh, like raise uh, life in a barren desert, and you're tr you're uh, a, a almost like a, a life deity kind of trying to like create life in this like barren area and stuff as well mm -hmm. too. So it's pretty cool for theme. Um, overall, yeah, it just looks very, very neat. Um, uh, I think if you like, again, if you like heavy Euro games, if you like stuff uh, uh, like this with like low spite but pretty thinky, very like mm -hmm. strategic. So not a whole lot of player interaction. Not a lot of player interaction whatsoever. Like the most player interaction you're going to have is taking resources from so, from an area. Does everybody have their own desert board, or are they? It looks like they have their own board to kind of 
drive their engine, but there's yeah. a shared board they're building on? That's that's correct, yeah, exactly. And and you kind of score sets, you can see here on the, on the back here, you can score sets via these cards here on your player board, but then you are interacting with this main area in the center to actually like gain those cards and create those okay. things as well too over the course of the game. Kind of reminds me a teeny bit of um, um, Terraform and Mars. A little bit, yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's about that weight, I'd say, as well, too. Okay. Where really? it's, it, yeah, yeah. It's definitely, like, it, it's going to be on the, the heavier side, but not too terribly heavy that you can't teach to okay. friends or things like that as well, to get, get people into the yeah, game as well, too. Yeah, because Terraform Mars, you can kind of learn as you play to some degree. A You're not going to win, but you can, you no. can function. But it's one of the games that I would teach my friends who don't really play board games, but I would get them into, like, this is kind of a harder game we're going to play tonight okay. for the first okay. time, maybe. Yeah, and I think this is kind of similar to that as well, too. Plus, if you have, like, friends who are into botany or things like that, or, or my, my little brother is an agriculture major, so like this is something that I might get him as well too. Wait, so are we going to have any game on this table that someone in your family would not play? I'm actually curious about that. I think we might, uh, we're going to see if we can hit a... My cousin would love Lini no Kuni. He loves right, anime. Okay. We can do this. All right. I can I can find a relative for you. You know what? It's Thanksgiving. I'm going to find a relative for each one of these. Cool. Okay. Who would play Fog of Love? Yeah, uh, didn't you just say your grandmother would or you would? No, my grandmother would love Wingspan, oh. though. Okay. I would probably love Fog of War. See, there you go. Fog you count as a relative. I'm, a, I'm my own relative now. All right, <laughs> so, uh, a Euro game. Um, yes. Uh, Plant trees. Yeah, and it's similar-esque to yep. um, Terraforming Mars. Yes. Any other games that you kind of think would you put in this category? Uh, man, uh, stuff about that weight. Uh, Stone Age, uh, God, you know... Uh, What's the other one by uh, Uwe Rosenberg? Uh, Agricola? Agricola, yeah, Agricola, okay. stuff like that, essentially, okay. yeah. Where, where it's just that kind of, it's just a mix of everything that makes Euro games Euro games. And very ar it. archetypal Euro yeah, game. Yeah, very archetypal Euro game, exactly. Uh, you get gems that you score at the end of the game and stuff like that as well, too. Okay. And this, it's very much that style of, of if you like those types of games, you'll, you will definitely probably enjoy this as well, too. Great. Yeah. For sure. Great. And, and theme-wise, I think it looks very pretty as well, too. It's well, theme-wise, cool. why don't we uh, why don't we stick with plants? More plants! Now, my mother would love this game. My mother so loves wait, hold roses. on. Your grandmother, Ishtar. Your no, mother... Oh, oh, I, I'm, right, I'm I know. Mad. I know. You're getting all confused. You have, you have too many relatives. I got a huge I can't keep family. Straight. My mother has 16 brothers and sisters. It's crazy. Wow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so Tussie Mussy. Tussie Mussy. Uh, a, couple, a couple notes. Yeah. First... Elizabeth Hargrave, same designer as Wingspan. Yes. Second, is this is this is a button shy wallet yes. game that we just talked about. On almost ran out here when you guys were talking, but I didn't because I didn't. Wasn't gonna learn it. Anyway, but uh, Emma, this is what Emma was talking about earlier. If you guys mm -hmm. were on the show earlier, this is one of the games that Emma was very very excited about showing off, and I yep. yeah. So if you can see, like yep. it's just a handful of cards Comes in, a in basically a wallet, mm -hmm. and uh, what is Tussie Mussy? Tussie Mussy is a game that uses uh, uh, so it uses card scoring. It's similar to something like uh, oh man, uh, Love Letter or uh, those like Seiji, Seiji Kanai style games where mm -hmm. they're like a little bag of just like ten cards. Uh, mm -hmm. Not Flux because Flux is a little bit too like mechanically yeah. different, yeah. but like those style games if you like that yeah. type of yeah, stuff. Yeah, micro games. Micro games, exactly. Yeah. Uh, what it is is it's a, a sets of cards. They are all based on Victorian era um, like Oh, it's the language flowers. of flowers. That's what it was. It's the language right. of flowers. Because I remember yeah. the Kickstarter for this and I almost backed it because of that element. It seems wild. I, what I really love especially is on the bottom of each card, so like the, the card for red roses, on the bottom of the card says, I love you. Mm -hmm. On the bottom of like, there's like a blue like forget me nots and it'll say like, I will always remember. Mm -hmm. So the bottom of the card actually has like the, the it the, has the, like, the, the, the flower thing. Yeah, it has a sing single like three word sentence that's mm -hmm. like a like, it's what this flower inspires, yep. like the feeling it inspires kind of as well too, yeah. And this was a uh, I cut, you choose kind of thing. Exactly. Yeah, because yeah. you get yeah. like a couple cards and you choose how you divide them up mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and then another player will pick uh, like a pile. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Which ones they get, which mm -hmm. ones you get. Exactly. And then uh, each of the cards themselves have things where, so like red roses will say, you score uh, this many points for every red heart in your hand. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the game, depending on how many of those you have, then you score that number of points as well, too. So it's based on how many of those sets you collect and how many of those. Uh, each of those cards actually has almost like a, uh, a specific thing that you want to fulfill as well, too, mm -hmm. over the course of the game as well, too. So, it's really like, so the cards are both how you score mm -hmm. and. 
um, the what you're scoring. The element you're scoring. So it kind of reminds me a little bit of Point Salad. Yeah. And uh, Council of Verona. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, but in in a in a They're love letter style. Mm -hmm. Yeah, love letter mm -hmm. style box. And, and it, like, you know, this is supposed box. to be a thirty minute game. Um, yeah. You know, this is this is like a stocking stuffer travel kind of game. It absolutely is. Yeah. And the, the the artwork on the actual cards themselves is gorgeous as well too. I don't know if y'all can see that, but the the f the flower drawings themselves are like really fantastic. And they have a wide variety of stuff as well too. There's daisies and f roses and like forget-me-nots and like all different style of like Great. you know things that you can find. Whether it's like you're making like a bouquet or you're doing like I got got you gotcha some daisies. Like it's it's very like cute in the way that it talks. And about it looks like it's like twelve-ish dollars. Yeah, as well too. Which so is fantastic. fairly cheap. Super easy to pick up as well too if you like uh, something like that. And I'm gonna predict not a whole lot of spite. Not a whole lot of spite whatsoever. No, very, very, very much. You mean there's no like there's no f u uh, flower that you <laughs> so can send the, the Victorian? It's the era? one flower. That's the, the, the Victorians <laughs> must have had a flower that was like, I'm socially required to send <laughs> yeah, you a bouquet, <laughs> but I didn't want to. <laughs> I There's got to be one. It's like the most English thing to have. Like, yeah, yes, exactly. congratulations. <laughs> exactly, right? Yeah. It's so good to see <laughs> it's, you. It's quintessentially like English. All right, let's talk about let's talk about my boy Jim. Okay. <laughs> this is Jim Henson's Labyrinth, the card game. Really? Wow. Does, does this actually exist? Because according to board game, <laughs> it's true. And the publisher's true, website, it may not. Um. So, interesting looking game mm -hmm. from our research. Not a lot on the internet about this mm -hmm. currently. Um, I think it looks really interesting. Yeah, so I haven't had a chance to play this. I haven't had a chance, you to, play this, a chance to play this. Yeah, I, I couldn't really find but hey, a lot of reviews. If you like Labyrinth, that is my main thing. If you like Labyrinth, if you like Jim Henson, please support your your boy Jim and his estate because he has done a lot of wonderful things, including Fraggle Rock, one of the best shows ever made. I do love Fraggle Rock. Oh, it's so I mean, good. basically, like th with the with the kind of breakdown on the back of what the cards are, yeah. it, f it does really feel like a trick taking kind of game. It really does. Yeah, uh, like it reminds me of uh, Three Dragon Ante <laughs> or or stuff like yep. that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, or even like maybe points on still like with a little bit of like collecting mm. sets and stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, and scoring. Um, yeah, it just seems really beautiful. The artwork looks gorgeous. Um, mm -hmm. uh, really cool, like references to the show and stuff, as, or the movie and stuff as well too. Um, yeah, if you know how to fushigi uh, orbs, then <laughs> I'm sure oh. you will be to uh, If you know how to fushigi my Yuki, <laughs> wait, yeah. what? <laughs> my best friend of 12 years bought fushigi balls this year, and he's been trying to learn how to do it. Is that what like, those are called? That's what those are called. Oh, the, the, okay. the glass like, yeah, orbs well, that you like, spit whenever, in your hands. Whenever yeah. anybody says Fushigi, I just assume that we're talking about uh, that is the word for one that of thing? the original Magical <laughs> anime, Fushigi Yugi. <laughs> is that a thing? Oh, yeah. no. Fushigi Yugi is, oh. a, is a very classic anime. So that's interesting. It has that nothing to do with that. glass balls. Really? Well, maybe it should. <laughs> well, Jim Henson's Labyrinth, the card game. Pick it up. Good deal, Jess. It looks very cool. Mm -hmm. And if you like, yeah. So we know. suspect. Yes. This is a trick-taking game. Uh, the Highly. Card, the card art uh, looks great. Yes. Um, so, but it's it's probably going to be pretty lightweight mm -hmm. uh, and not a whole lot of spite. No, definitely not. No, I, I don't believe so. Whatsoever. I mean, the Labyrinth yeah. is known for a huge spite. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, but yeah. basically, uh, Three Dragon Ante. If you yep. like that, I would check this out. Um, there's another trick-taking game I can't remember um, that I think would be similar to this. Uh, Hocus maybe um, might not be uh, similar-ish. It feels similar. Like a lot of the games that are kind of using traditionally kind of cards. Mm, yeah. um, and then if you just love yeah. Labyrinth. If you love Labyrinth, yeah. If you love Bowie and, yeah. And his David Bowie and his area. giant David, yeah, exactly, yeah. All right, so hold, hold, on, hold on. Which member of your family wants that one? Oh, oh man, definitely my aunt. And my like my whole aunt's side of my aunt Katie and that whole side of the family love. We used to watch Muppet Treasure Island like once a month basically because it wow. was like a it was a huge part of That's also re revisiting it. Not a great fan movie. It's like okay, but m there's a lot of very good parts of it, I think, and stuff as well too, but man, it's a weird movie as well too. <laughs> there's a whole We've got Cabin Fever song that's real weird and stuff. It's, All right, yeah, so, so Wingspan, Grandmother. Wingspan, Grandma. Uh, Fog of Love, you. Me. Labyrinth, your aunt. Yes. Ishtar and Tussie. Ishtar Mussie. for my brother. Probably. No, for your brother? Ishtar? Yeah, he's an, he's an agriculture man. Oh, that's right. He, that's he right. does agriculture. And then your mother is Tussie Mussie. Wait, is he? 
Yes, my mother definitely has Tessie. Yeah, she loves flowers. She, like, she used to have a huge rose garden when you I was You realize when I meet these people, it'll be like, have, yeah. Hi, Tessie <laughs> Mussy. Exactly. I'll call your brother Ishtar, and he'll be like, you, What yeah. are you doing? <laughs> Did he ever get you that game? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> All right, let's look at Death on the Cards. This looks very cool. And I actually really like Agatha Christie novels as well, too. I used to watch a lot of the. Uh, like KCTS used to do a uh, like a murder series. Oh yeah, that yeah. was like yeah. I watched. Yep. I watched yeah. those. They, they were so fantastic. Growing up, we used to watch all of that. I mean, Snow Columbo, but Snow Foils War, exactly. Yeah, um, but yeah, Agricultures Death on the Cards. Um, Death on the Cards is a deduction-based game. Um, it is a deck of forty-eight cards that is a murder mystery. Um, one of you amongst you is a murderer. It wasn't me. It wasn't. It, Derek's always the traitor and always the murderer. Nope. So. If you play this me. game with Derek, it is a pretty obvious answer. Uh, we can pretty much just quit the game like the first turn. No, you're <laughs> you're, you're yeah. going to be wrong. You're going to lose. You're going to lose. Every time. Um, but Death of the Cards has beautiful chibi artwork. Uh, I don't it's, know if you can tell. It's so weird. Like, right? Yeah. Who thinks that we're, <laughs> we're going to make an Agatha Christie licensed game? Let's get super deformed uh, anime art. Let's do 1940s like, chibi art. Yeah, I'm really excited about it. They have like 1940s flapper girls and stuff, and it's pretty cool. Um, uh, but overall, yeah, but, and anime <laughs> chibi, like what? Yeah. Um, overall, it is just a uh, events cards. So uh, cards will come up. They have certain event actions on them. Uh, depending on what those are, you will deduce based on that information which one of you is the murderer. Uh, at the start of the game, one of you decide. You know, you draw cards and you figure out who is the murderer. It's very much one of those werewolf, you know, yeah. resistance, okay. yeah, deduction type of game. Do you know if you're the murderer? You do, and okay. you can actively work against the rest of the group as well too to try and make sure that you throw them off your but your trail. And definitely not the murderer. You're definitely not the murderer. Definitely no, not and the murderer. I'm I'm not suspicious whatsoever. Great, that's crazy. Well, I mean, if I'm not the murderer, that makes you the murderer. <laughs> oh no! I In a two-player game, I guess. This. Yeah. I guess you're right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, either that, or we're just investigating and nobody yeah, actually died. It did nothing. Yeah. But yeah, um, if you like those style of games, the deduction intrigue, those are mm -hmm. personally some of my personal favorite games. Yeah, are I, I really enjoy yeah, them. Yeah, I, I love Coup. I love all of those style of games. So if you like those kinds of games, this is definitely for you. If you like something that's very, this doesn't seem to be necessarily story focused, but it does have a lot of cool like you know event actions and stuff as well too. So if you like those kinds of games where there's not necessarily a story being told, but there's definitely kind of a, a narrative. You could make some of, tea. Yeah. You could yeah, wear yeah. a sweater. You could you could put on a marathon of murder she wrote. Put in the on background. my flapper girl outfit. <laughs> well, the whole flapper girl. Uh, like this this makes me feel like this is uh this would be a perfect tie-in for like the young Agatha Christie yeah, adventures. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Remember like young Indiana yeah. Jones. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's awesome. But yeah, it looks very cool. Um, and if you like Agatha Christie and you know there are those novels, that's also a very cool thing to support as well too. If you if you just like this genre as well too. So uh, and so neat. who who which family member? Man, I probably get this for my uh, my. Oh, you know what? My niece would love this. My niece is super into okay. like literary stuff and stuff as well too. All she's right. a very very bright kid, and she probably would absolutely love something like this as well okay. too. Also, she's getting into gaming recently as well too. She gets super into D and D recently, which is very right. cool. I mean, if you just want to like write a check for all these, I can, can just take these home at the end. Of the, yeah, if that's no, cool I don't think. <laughs> well, that's your copy of the. This was the battle, I think, is it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Very cool. Uh, what are we doing next? Uh, let's talk about Nino Kuni. Let's okay. talk about anime, fam. Great. So this this is cousin. This is definitely my cousin Peter. Okay. My cousin Peter loves everything. So Nino Kuni anime inspired. is an anime like a very. Is it very, it's a very Ghibli very PlayStation Ghibli game, right? PlayStation. It was PlayStation yeah. 3 was the first one? I believe. Was it 4? So. Mm, I believe it was 3. I believe it was. Because Nino Kuni 2 is definitely on 4. I think it was last year. Anyway, it, either it, way, it is a yeah. relatively recent PlayStation game but of charming childhood adventure. Exactly, uh, whimsy and uh, childhood adventure, and uh, everything that makes Studio Ghibli great and fun and cute. And, and this board layout yeah. does not look like it is a super simple child adventure. No, it's it, so uh, uh, Nino Kuni is going to be a kingdom builder. So okay. essentially, you are. Uh, a member of a royal kingdom, you are building up this kingdom over the course of the game, you are one of these child adventures essentially, and you will have, essentially you'll complete quest cards, you will uh, use resources, uh, hire workers, and then basically put them into place to build buildings and stuff in the game that will have mm -hmm. effects over the course of the game as well too. So yeah, it's definitely not on the lighter side as far as like mechanics go, it is definitely a kind of medium weight kingdom builder for okay. sure. And it's this definitely is, this be is from a Steamforge, right? It is actually, yeah. Yeah, it's and Steamforge has done a couple other licensed games. They do a lot of licensed stuff, and especially video game, uh, they did Dark Souls, mm -hmm. um, yep. and they did uh, they did a couple other, like, they've done a lot of like kind of geek culture mm -hmm. kind of stuff as well too, I found, so they tend to they tend to find, specialize in these kinds of things as well. 
excuse me, as well, too. So, yeah, if you like, um, and, and honestly, uh, they tend to do That's a right, that's right. This does have minis. It does have miniatures. Because I remember they were showing off mm -hmm. the minis at a couple different times. Yeah, it, those are the char player characters you play as well, yep. too, and to, you, you put them on quests and stuff over the course of the game, and you, you visit areas of the Is town and stuff. Um, n I don't believe it's cooperative. Actually, hold on. I no, it is. It's, nope. yeah, it's, yeah. it's a cooperative. Co uh, yeah, no, no, I didn't bring notes. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. was the other thing I remembered mm -hmm. about this game is minis and cooperative. Yep. So I was like, Nelly, are you interested? Mm -hmm. To is it good? Have you tried it? I have not played it. Yet. Oh yeah. Okay. We well, we yeah. just got to see the minis and the minis. Oh, are pretty neat. they seem cool. Yeah, they seem really mm -hmm. beautiful as well too. Yeah, they seem fantastic. I mean, like this this seems like an obvious game to get if you love the video game. Absolutely. Um. But what if you don't? What if you've never played the video game? If you've never played the video game, but you like Studio Ghibli movies and medium weight board games, <laughs> so caveat, both of those things. Uh, chances are pretty high. Very, I mean, very high. Yeah, definitely. Um, uh, who doesn't love Studio Ghibli movies, first of all? And then you probably Even like. Even I love Studio Ghibli. Yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. I, uh, With my cold dead heart. <laughs> <laughs> we, we do say that, don't we? <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, if you like those types of things, you're definitely going to like this. If, and, and again, if you like the strategy of medium weight games, so mm -hmm. worker placement, uh, mm -hmm. a little bit of resource management, fun quests the type stuff. So I go here, I roll some dice, I complete my quest, and I get some rewards. So cooperative. cooperative. So not really a spite game. Definitely not. No. Nope. Uh, do you know what games this would compare to? I, I mean, there's 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 more and more cooperative games. Yeah, but, but this this seems like a little bit different um, mechanical take. Definitely, um, it's hard to describe because it, because it's because it's a kingdom builder. It's hard to, to put it in a category with like something like uh, the captain is dead or you know sure, what I mean. Sure. Or, or yeah yeah or uh, uh, what was the one we uh, a couple weeks ago we talked about the worms one. Um, uh, there was like last bastion. No, it was the one where. Uh, you have to you have to protect the area, but you have to go out and grab artifacts and come back at the same time. The board looks mm. like a big like. Oh, uh, was that the the terror below one? Yeah, terror below, terror mm -hmm. below. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It kind kind of like it, you could put it in the vein of those games, but again, all of those cooperative games have very different mechanics as far as like what you're actually doing on the other side of the the cooperative side of this. Yeah. This has such a specific like kind of kingdom kingdom buildy okay. mechanic to it that it's definitely in the vein of cooperative game, but then it's definitely in the vein of kingdom building games. Okay. So if you like things like, uh, man, uh, uh, Imperial Settlers or, you know, some games yeah, like I've, I that. Yeah, because I don't think there's any, I don't, I don't recall any other co-op kingdom building games. No, no, I don't. And okay. that, that was my big thing when I was trying to kind of review this was, like, I wasn't sure whether to put it in the category of a very cooperative, you know, action taking, oh, I need to do sure. this and you need to do this on your sure. turn because then we can win. Sure. Or is it more... Well, if I do this, we get this building. Por que no los dos? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I think it's I think it fits somewhere with both of those themes as well. Too. So if you sure. like those, it's probably on the. On the, okay. the so you, if you like Nino Kuni, yep. If you like cooperative. You yep. like kingdom builders. Yep. Uh, or you are your cousin. Or you are my cousin. Then uh, one Nino of you. Kuni. <laughs> exactly. And then Nino Kuni too. The board game. <laughs> Fantastic. Right, so I think yeah. we have two left. We have two left. All right. Let's let's do Twilight. Let's save the best for last. Twilight Struggle. This is Twilight Struggle. Turn zero rules. This is for turn zero of Twilight Struggle. What it is? It's a package. It's yeah. It's it's. I mean, this is a very. That's a very uh, Twilight Struggle. That's on brand for GMT. I think is this this style of packaging. Right? It's just <laughs> here's, your, here's your game. Get here's out of here. Here's your stuff. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The phone is yeah. playing. You're not opening exactly. it. What the hell you yeah. want? <laughs> War for North Africa takes Who do you think a we thousand are? hours. Yeah, get out of here. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so, uh, turn zero is uh, new rules for, I like to call this alternate history twilight struggle. Okay. Which is, uh, so essentially these are a set of cards, uh, a set of rules, and a set of instructions for how to play twilight struggle with essentially a randomized kind of different rule set. So uh, what if China hadn't lost this engagement in this oh, war okay. and they still retained this territory during this period? What if this politician in Russia had never been, uh, you know, uh, ousted, and mm -hmm. what if he remained in power for this long? And so, at the start of the game, you actually draw a number of cards that are, okay, here is the situation. It's like Twilight Struggle, but these are the minor changes to world history that we're mm -hmm. going to make, and we want to see what what impact it has. what impact that has. It, on the world it's struggle. a very interesting idea, just because yeah. it, it's it's hard to remember how much of history is actually kind of random. Like, yeah. I don't know if you saw with the the anniversary of the Berlin Wall falling, mm -hmm. there were a couple of, like, you know, documentaries or, or commentary about sure. it, and how much that was kind of just because they were scrambling and weren't planning properly, yeah. the Berlin Wall was just, just okay down. Just had to come down. Yeah, yeah but, yeah, like, right, yeah. you know, it, it was almost a, a, a coincidence of events that led to that. Absolutely, yeah. And I, I personally listen to a lot of uh, political podcasts, like poli-sci podcasts, and they... Uh, definitely, it is something that I found that is is the number of events, small events that happen where like 
this is just an agent who met with this person and they had this, you know, they worked for this company and it was this m minor meeting, but then it leads to these next mm -hmm. things over the course of, you know, five or six years. So yeah, it's, it's an interesting take on Twilight Struggle. So it's not going to make Twilight Struggle easier <laughs> or <laughs> no, no. to get into, <laughs> but if you've been playing a lot of Twilight Struggle. Exactly, yeah, and you, and and you want something different, right? Yeah, yeah. for your four hour Cold War era uh, poli sci game, then I, this is definitely for you. Um, if you like the GMT style of real crunchy, like very historical, very like, you know, almost set in the real world kind and of. maximum spite. Maximum spite, like as spiteful as you can get. Yeah, no, it's definitely that style of game for sure. So, yeah. important question now for this episode. Yes. Which family? Oh, are? yeah. Who, who would actually like this? See, I don't have a lot of historians in my family. That's the biggest thing. That's the big thing. Also, I don't have a lot of people in my family who play games like Twilight Struggle, to be honest with you. Um, I probably would find this for probably my grandpa. My grandpa watched, did, he used to watch a lot of like history stuff, so probably mm -hmm. I would go for my, my grandfather, most likely, uh, would probably be the first person I'd think of. Does, uh, so he's watching a lot of history channel? Well, like the latest stuff like that, essentially, uh, yeah. So, so I mean, definitely is like, there like an ancient astronaut uh, aspect to this? So that was my, that was my big, that was literally my first thought when I saw this was, okay, this is fine, but where's my like, where's my like sci-fi, like Twilight Struggle expansion where it's like, okay, but what if Russia had like, Figured out anti grav technology and had grav tanks, and like, <laughs> like that's the expansion that I, I want. think that's it's called like risk. <laughs> it's it's just risk. a risk 2142 AD. Yeah. yeah, it's just future risk. All right, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that is uh, Twilight Struggle it's rules, zero rules. Okay, so I think we have one left. We have now? one final game, right? one final thing, one final box. I don't even need my notes for this. Get out of your notes. Uh, so this is <laughs> Sisters of Battle. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And this uh, probably has some context we want to give. So, oh, man. So Sisters of Battle. Yes. Uh, the Warhammer 40K. In they the 40, have, They have not been plastic forever. For, like, a year, like, um, more than 10 years? Yep, but least. they, uh, it's been a thing that, that has been very popular. I'm yeah. going to have to put it back in there, you realize. Oh, yeah, yeah. There you go. Um, it's the thing that people have been asking for for a long, 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 long time. God, yeah, yeah. Uh, cool. It's kind of a joke at this point, right? Yeah. Um, and so this yeah. is the first time that Plastic Sisters are available in any kind of number. Like they did one special edition to celebrate this. Yes. A couple months ago. Uh, with one a single. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. It was a couple months ago. Yep. Yeah. Um, and uh, that single character too looked absolutely gorgeous. Was it? Mm -hmm. Was a fantastic sculpt. So what? Yeah. A year or two ago, Games Workshop announced they're going to do this. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Uh, this is the first like collector box that's come out. Yeah. Uh, and you get uh, you know basically these units in it here. Yep. If you want to hold that up. This this battalion, yep. essentially. You get those units. Yep. You get the special edition codex, which is gorgeous, uh, and you get like some you know reference cards and dice and stuff like that. Which they only print when the books come out, so mm -hmm. get them like now. Yep, because they will go to. Well, print. speaking of that, yeah, this set is probably sold out at this point. Most likely, yeah, um, yeah. Like yeah. it releases today. Yep, and if you are at all interested in it, um, you should probably just go get it. You should call your LGS right now and put it on hold. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, it, it, it is probably worth noting that all of the. The units in here, like the rule book, mm -hmm. um, maybe not the special edition. We don't know. Mm, they yeah. haven't said anything yeah, about said it. Anything yet, yeah. But the normal edition of the rule book and will all of the models one. will uh, be out. I think they they predicted January, February. That's their, that's their hope. Yeah, um, exactly. So yep. they'll be out soon. Yep. You don't have to get this. No. But if you want it now, or if you want the special edition, or if you want the cards, mm -hmm. you got to get it now. Absolutely. Yeah. So I know that some game workshops will have some. Mm -hmm. uh, today, I would hope so. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you know, stores ordered as many as they could. Yeah, but it sold out online like in thirty six minutes or something like that. And, and they did their pre orders two months ahead of time because I think they learned their lesson with the Ossiarch Bone Reaper release. And mm -hmm. so they they really like they pushed this release out to make sure to get those orders on time. So mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, if your L just has it, definitely this is something to go for, even if it's like a collector thing. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah, especially. Yeah. I mean, yeah, if, yeah. if you're into sisters at all. Yeah. Um, more is coming, but this is like the first release taste Wave. test. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's gonna be and and from from like their rule set. For those of you who don't play Warhammer, these are like battle nuns that are, you know, in love with the emperor and have undying support for this like evil empire. Super angry battle nuns. Super angry battle nuns, and they just look so cool. And it has just been such a cool release. So. Yeah, I, I had a chance to flip through the codex. codex Some really cool art. 
um, a lot more variety yeah. in the the battle nuns the than previous ones. No, the, I love there's a lot of shaved heads and mm -hmm. like bolts and yep. stuff. There and are like a, lot a lot of, of like, like just really badass ladies who are ready to murder Looks everybody so they cool. see. Yeah, a lot of very uh, uh, Mad Max. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of like very Fury Road. Fury, yeah, Fury, yeah. very so furious. I'm, I'm excited models. about it. Yeah. Uh, my yeah. wife is excited about it. <laughs> uh, we will see how long it takes us to actually put together and get paint the models those. ready. Yeah, totally. I think we're getting yeah. uh, kill team rules for them in the kill team there, annual. There was an announcement. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, that that's coming out soon as well too. Yep. So yeah, uh, I think yeah. it's pre-order tomorrow probably. Cool, awesome. Yeah, and I've heard we're also getting new. Uh, they're getting new rules for uh, like custom uh, specialists as well too. Yeah, which, which I suspect will be terrible. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah, those are the new releases that I was able to grab uh, this morning. Thank you, everyone. Uh, and just to review, Blue Highway Games, one of our partners, mm -hmm. um, they have twenty percent off all Jigsaw puzzles today. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow they'll have twenty percent off any one item. Yeah. Um, Mox is open at nine a.m. all weekend. You get a five dollar credit on a gift card for every fifty dollars that you spend. Mm -hmm. You spend a hundred dollars, you get an enamel pin. One hundred and fifty dollars for a drawstring bag. Mm -hmm. Two hundred dollars for a beanie. $250 for a mug full of dice. Ooh. Zulu's board game. Sip those dice up. Uh, <laughs> not recommended. That is a choking hazard. Uh, Zulu's uh, is also open at 9. They have 20 to 70% off of a whole big long list of games. They're doing $1 credit for every $10 spent. Mm -hmm. And then they, as we mentioned, you have a whole bunch of doorbuster deals. Absolutely. Yep. Um, they do like deep discounts on um, new popular games. Yep. Please go say hi to Javion, Amanda, and Ethan, mm -hmm. our yep. wonderful partners. So those stores. those are a bunch of uh, yep. the stores that have kind of been helping us out at New Release Rundown. So Absolutely. we wanted to thank them as they mm -hmm. are super busy on Black Friday. Yes. So if you're in any of those regions, go check them out. Say hi and yeah. be nice. If you are not in those regions and you are shopping today, yeah. still be nice. Please be kind. Wish our friends good luck in the trenches. It is mm -hmm. going to be a busy day for them, I'm sure. Yeah, uh, and I think that is it for our new release rundown this week. I Thank so. you, Will, for uh, helping us out. I am always here, and I uh, hope everybody had fun. Thank you for sticking around and joining us. Mm -hmm. Remember that on Monday night at five p.m. Pacific, Brothers Murph uh, will be playing one game or another. Cool. Uh, noon Pacific on Wednesdays is Fireside with Peter Ackeson, where he interviews somebody who was at the beginning of Magic. Mm -hmm. who was there during the growth of Magic and Watsi. Yep. And then on Fridays, 11 a.m., we have Table Takes, yep. uh, where we kind of cover the news uh, headlines and a topic from the week, the Kickstarters that were particularly noteworthy. Mm -hmm. And then, theoretically, at 12.30, 12.45, uh, we have New Release Rundown every Friday, Our where best. we try to cover what came out this past week. Yes. Thank you very much for joining us, everybody. Mm -hmm. And we will see you at a future show Yes, soon. yeah. Have a wonderful rest of your evening, friends.